Okay, can you hear me? Okay, thanks. Um, before I begin, how many people here actually have a games experience? It's a very niche talk, but um, hopefully some of the stuff we've done might apply to, to just general game development. Um, so I'll begin with a bit about me, just quickly go through these slides. Um, I've been making games for quite a long time now. I started in 93. Um, actually, I worked with um, this gentleman over here, Jim, uh, with FormGen, with a game I made called Halloween Harry, or Alien Carnage, as it was called back in the mid early 90s, with... Um, uh, with FormGen, and also went through um, uh, Apogee as well as a shareware game. computers in Australia, which is where I'm from. So that's kind of how I began in games. Very old school. Um, and there's some titles I worked on, uh, Destroy All Humans 2 and Tire the Tasmanian Tiger. Um, so, and there's some screenshots from uh, the social games we, we developed uh, at Three Blokes Rock You, um, which, was, uh, which was a fun time, making some cool games. So the question is, why an accelerator? Why have I gone from being making games to now, helping other people make games. Well, before answering that question, it's good to know who uh, is behind the Accelerator. So I'm the program manager, but a guy called Steve Baxter uh, founded this, uh, the Accelerator. He, um, he uh, founded a company in Australia called Pipe Networks in 2001, and it was, it was acquired in 2010 for $373 million. So um, after Pipe, I think Steve took a vacation for a year and uh, did this sort of stuff you do when you have a lot of money, like buy planes and, and boats. Uh, but he loves the startup industry, so um, he also worked at Google for a little bit in between waiting for his uh, company to sort of settle. Uh, but he founded a, a company called River City, River City Labs, which is a, a not-for-profit um, co-working co space. So the idea is it's a place for people to come in. Uh, it's basically run bare bones in terms of the price you need to pay. It's, it's only 300, 380 Australian dollars a month. You get a desk, you get internet access. Uh, but more importantly, you get access to a lot of really amazing mentors in the local startup scene in, in Brisbane and, and within Australia. And uh, with Steve's connections, we get a lot of interesting speakers come in and, and do presentations to us. So it's a really great place to, um, to learn about you know, getting a startup done and getting access to great mentors. Um, so the question then about then why do a games startup accelerator? So one of the things is uh, kind of the... The, the kind of thing behind Rivercity Labs is it is about helping local community. So one of the things Steve wanted to do was to create more local success uh, within Australia, um, run this accelerator as a for-profit, whereas Rivercity Labs is not for-profit, so it's about making money back for the investors. And also, you know, I'm passionate about games, which is why, why I'm involved in the, in the actual um, in the program. Um, and a lot of the DNA, I think, from Rivercity Labs and, and with Steve's idea of helping uh, the startup community is in right pedal, and myself from being making games for a long time and, and being involved in the local sort of scene, it's about also helping the community and uh, helping, helping grow them. And also, Brisbane's been uh, hit pretty bad, as I, sh I assume a lot of other places have, with the global financial crisis and you know, studios closing like THQ. We had head office in, in Brisbane. Uh, we also had um, Pandemic which is where I did Destroy Humans. It was acquired by EA, class shut down. So there's a lot of really great talent who can make great games. Um, so my involvement in being involved in this was uh, I set aside doing a mobile game at River City Labs and um, worked in this game called Save Our Village, uh, which has been published through Ludia. And being there, Steve saw what I was doing uh, and he also started sponsoring a local games uh, meetup called uh, the Brisbane Independent Games Meetup, or Big Dev, which is held in a place called the Manor Bar, which is, uh, I think, one of the first sort of computer game bars, which is a really interesting place where you can go and hang out, have drinks, uh, play all the latest games. There's a big ball of games memorabilia 
Uh, a guy called Yahtzee Croshaw uh, was one of the founders of the bar. He does a, a really cool online uh, review site called Zero Punctuation, uh, and he's written lots of funny stuff online. So he's one of the founders. So it's got a very, very cool vibe. And it was at this um, meetup that uh, Steve met Alistair Doolin from Bane Games. And Alistair just launched a, a game called Battle Group. Uh, and to get Battle Group made, he had to take on some investment uh, from a local investor. Because Steve, being uh, actively involved in the local startup community and, and investing in companies, uh, loved the fact that you know, this uh, Bane Games made their money back within a few months. Um, and he thought, well, can we apply this with a fund and, and help the local community? And make money for investors. So we set up we set up um, Right Pedal at River City Labs, which is uh, this is what it looks like. It's a very kind of funky, cool place. It's it's got a very open floor plan, um, and being in there, the vibe is really.
I was a bit disappointed initially because I thought it wasn't as high as the 30, but when I look back at the numbers, you know, these are 17 uh, strong games with prototypes you can play, whereas in the first 30 we had um, probably about 10 or so with, with prototypes. So it's actually, um, people have come out and done some great stuff. Uh, another challenge, which is uh, a work in progress, is publishing. So this is something we haven't done yet. We're, we've still got three games in development. Um, so a big challenge here, which we haven't solved is, and we're working on solving, is how do we get the games into the players' hands? You know, we, we've got, we're looking at best ways to market our games, uh, best methods for, for cross-promotion, uh, how do we build the word of mouth, and then, you know, how do we do our user acquisition? So this is probably a talk for, for next year to see if we succeed at doing this. Um, but we're looking at, um, to the connections, friends of ours who have games, doing cross-promotion within those games. Uh, again, with River City Labs, we've got a great marketing team who can help get our game message out there. We're doing developer diaries with game, uh, Gamezebo at the moment, and looking at doing more, more sort of stuff like that. And we also have um, local developer diaries happening. So we're building the, the word up about these games um, over time. So there are kind of a big challenges. So then the actual process of building the accelerator. So I haven't done this before. I've run game studios. Um, so the process was how do we, where do we begin? And I was very lucky that Jason De La Rocca had launched um, Execution Labs. Um, he announced that while we were setting up, system, setting up our processes, it was, it was announced they're doing that. So that was really good. And I had a chat to Jason about what they'd done. So there was some good information from him. Um, so what I, I did was I created, this is, you can't read this, this is my kind of crazy mind map. I just added things there as I brainstormed ideas. So I'll just go through to the kind of big headings and what's in them. Um, I probably should have done a few different slides, but um, that was the big picture. So I just put everything down in the big picture. What, based on um, you know, what I know needs to be done to make a game, and uh, Dan Vogt, who I said was the co-founder of Heartbreak, was really um, integral in coming in and sitting down and thrashing out some ideas. Um, he also did a lot of work on the selection process for how to select the teams. So the big picture items, as, as I saw them, and again, this is by no means you know, the be-all or end-all, it's just kind of the approach I took, was you know, how do we work out the selection process? How do we get industry partners? How do we find the mentors? Um, you know, what, what makes a great team? What sort of teams are we looking for? Uh, what games are we, are we looking at publishing? And uh, you know, what are we looking for in those games? And how do we publish them? And what resources do we need? So uh, with the selection process, um, we use f6s.com, which is a really great site for basically, you can, um, I think I have a picture of it here. Oh. I'll show it later on. But f6s lets you, to, lets you create, um, lets you invite uh, evaluators into the, into a, uh, into the uh, application. Has anyone here used F6S, by the way, or heard of X? F okay. So it's, it's really good. So you set up, um, you invite evaluators. So we have uh, about 12 evaluators from uh, the local games industry. Um, so when we, people apply, they use F6S to fill out a selection set of uh, criteria, questions. And um, the evaluators evaluate those questions. And we sort of stack rank those in terms of which ones we want to go to the next stage. And um, we've got people like uh, Brendan Watts from Ski Safari is on the selection committee, uh, Matt Hall, uh, George Fiddler, who's the GM of Kickstarter Australia. So it's, a, it's a, good, uh, a very wide and diverse range of people to give us some feedback. There's a different process to when I spoke to uh, Jason. They have their process more is based on the, um, the people running this studio. They, they, they select the games, then they, then they go out to the, to the uh, industry. We have done it the other way around. Um, we're still evaluating whether that's the right way to go. Um, so far, it's, it's good to have... Um, a different set of eyes looking at the games, uh, so that Steve and myself and the others, the accelerator, don't sort of get, you know, hung up on one game. It's great to hear what other people who maybe are working in a very different sort of industry, a different styles of games, may think. They might go, look, this has got some merits. Um, other big things on the list there were industry partners. Um, obviously, we needed business and legal, and as I mentioned, we we got uh, Pitcher Partners and McCulloch Robertson to, to help us out, um, identified those people and had them on board. Uh, Griffith University as well, and we got software support from. Uh, Corona Labs and Adobe. We don't yet have Unity. They're very hard to, to get a hold of. I'm not sure that they would be involved, but um, it'd be nice to have those guys um, you know, helping out because out of the 30-plus uh, applications we had, pretty much 98% of them were all Unity um, developers. We had one Corona application and uh, some Flash um, people. So Unity is definitely dominating the market uh, with Indies, which you probably all know that already. Um, with the mentoring, one of the big things with mentors, we needed people who uh, had a diverse range of skills to suit, um, to suit the, uh, the teams. So we're looking for people with great game design skills, people with technical skills, uh, business and marketing, 
uh, people who understood retention. Uh, again, we don't dictate what sort of games uh, we want. The, the only thing with it is we want games that are, uh, can be developed within five months. Uh, so by that very nature, it, it reduces the scope down um, and designed specifically for mobile. Um, so out of that, we, we know that people will make ones that they want to sell as a premium price, and we know there will be people who want free to play. So we needed people who understood monetization techniques and obviously um, people with legals and intellectual property experience. Uh, the other thing was, um, another thing in my mind map was evaluating the teams. How do, we, how do we evaluate them? And as I mentioned, we used F6S. We have a three-stage process, which I think I might explain a bit later, but I can talk about it now. Is we have, uh, the first stage really is, what's your game idea? Um, show us the prototype, and who is the team? Uh, we don't go into the details of milestone breakdowns. It was just you know, to make sure that someone doesn't come to us with an idea for uh, a huge World of Warcraft game on the iPhone they want to do in five months, we can you know, tell them that's not going to work. And we do give feedback. So when teams apply, uh, oftentimes we'll, uh, with the first round, we had some teams would come in. Um, we, had, we had teams who came in with you know, epic ideas, or the scope was too large. Um, and you know, we just give them feedback. And it's great having the mentors to come in as well, because uh, in the case of one team, they were doing a mini game collection. And you know, they, their idea was interesting. Uh, and one of our mentors has done a, a lot of minigames on, on DS and Game Boy and just said, look, these are all the challenges I had. And at the end of the kind of uh, talk with these guys, they realized that what they should do is focus on one of their minigames and polish that. Because uh, they were looking at doing it within four months. And so they took that one, one part of the game and expanded on that and made it uh, polished and, and fun to play. Uh, looking at the team's um, uh, strengths and weaknesses and creating a work plan and then working at what mentors they need help with. So we've had, for example, um, Praz uh, Morthy from, uh, from Kickstarter has helped out with one of our teams with how to monetize their game. And uh, this team has had games they've published beforehand, but for them it was just really great to think about um, you know, how can they take this game and uh, make the shift to free to play. So they had a lot of, lot of questions they had and a lot of answers they were given, which was great. Uh, another part of my mind map was you know, team induction. What, how do we get the teams in and how do we fit them into, our, into the program? Um, and so part of that was you know, creating that, um, the structure for the company. Um, because we have Pitcher Partners and McCullough Robertsons as our, um, as our legals and, and um, an accounting firm, it was really important to make sure that you know, these teams, they're, they're generally two to, f two to four people, up to five, making sure they do have things like employment agreements in place with each other making sure they do have a shells agreement so you know, they all understand who owns what. Uh, treating it like a real business from the, from the start, because again, as an accelerator, what we want them to do is to, to leave and have these good practices in place. Uh, you, we had them using a, a, a package called Xero, uh, accounting package, and trained them in how to use that so they know how to do their, in Australia, you know, pay your wages. And you know, we had one, one person, actually, one team was asking, well, how do we pay ourselves? Cause, and it was like, well, you, you have money and you pay yourselves. And kind of came, that was overwhelming to them because prior to that, they'd been working for nothing on their own. And you know, these are guys you know, pretty much out of university. So the idea that you, know, you set these structures up and you can pay yourselves and was you know, kind of enlightening to these teams. Uh, and then making sure they've got the right tools and process, uh, things like uh, you know, source safe and different things like that. And setting up, uh, we've got an internal intranet uh, where we kind of have a repository of all the information and best practices and giving them access to that. Uh, and then, of course, one big topic there was building the game and the best practices for how to prototype, uh, how to do user testing, uh, and setting up a series of milestones. So one of the ways we do this, this is quite interesting for me, coming from a, a general games developer background, is I'm used to having milestones where a publisher will, will actually um, yeah, pay you every month when you deliver a milestone. Steve was really um, adamant in saying there'd be two tranches. There'd be the upfront payment of half the money. Uh, so if they ask for 40000 they get 20000 up front. And the next 20,000 will be when we go, uh, when they deliver their uh, first playable, which we test on the Android App Store. And that was, to me and some of the other mentors, like, well, that's crazy. That, how would that work? And Steve's philosophy was, well, look, this is the way, this is a startup philosophy. It's, it's, we're not paying them to make a game for us. We're investing in their company. And, we, and we're there to help them understand that this is their business and how to run their business. So that's been really interesting. So the teams are really learning more than just making a game. It's about how do I run a business and handle cash flow, and, uh, which I think is really important for them. Uh, and again, that's the great thing of having that support backup of River City Labs. Uh, and then publishing, which, is, which to me is, is again, if I, if I was to categorize the biggest risk for us as an accelerator, to me it's, it scares me and is, is publishing and, and 
getting the game out and getting marketing in front of the users. Um, I, I know we can have quality games. We've got the mentors to help us with that. Uh, we've got a lot of experience in the, in the, in the team. But in terms, of, um, in terms of marketing, something we're still working on. So you know, we're looking at building the brand for the teams and for White Pedal. It's really important for us to, to build the team's um, brand. Uh, again, we want the teams to succeed and stand on their own. Uh, so we're using things like locally, we've, a, there was a, uh, the Brisbane Museum had a thing called Garage Gamer. We were actively involved in that. Uh, we've set up the uh, Brisbane Unity developers. So uh, we've had 50 plus people come to that. So we're helping uh, not only build the brand of uh, Right Pedal, but also the teams as well. Uh, we host a lot of these events at the Right Pedal Studios um, thing. What analytics do they use? Uh, and they look at you blankly, and you go, do you use Flurry? Do you use Contagion? So what we, what we do is we try to make them understand that there's methods to track your data. Uh, and things like, you know, are you using cross-promotion? And they, again, the blank looks. And there's things like chart boost and others. OK, uh, we're going to risks. Lots of different risks here. But basically, to, to cut it short, big risks were um, looking at things like, you know, the team's experience. Uh, the attitude to mentoring, um, their work ethics, uh, how they wanted to, um, how, you know, were they... Again, once they leave the accelerator. Um, we also looked at team capabilities, broke all that down, and assigned mentors. Um, we looked at their, their, their strengths with marketing and uh, you know, what, what were they good at in terms of uh, creating, um, they have any experience with uh, press or uh, community management. Um, and we looked at the game concepts, which, which I'll skip over this. Um, I'll, I'll just move, what I'll do is I'll, I'll move through all these uh, different things and put into practice. What I did was I took all that stuff from my mind map creditor checklist for pre-production, which was setting up the uh, tools, the gap analysis for what, we, what the teams need help with. Create a list of recurring things. We're doing stuff like uh, uh, weekly, uh, monthly testing. We're also doing uh, in-house testing where they wander around to people in the studio. And we do a thing that we got from Voxel Agents and Heartbreak called street testing. So they go out the street and put the, hand, the game in the people's hands and, and observe how they play uh, and iterate quickly on that. Um, and then we're looking at, uh, as I said, there's two big tranches of payment. Uh, one thing we're doing is we're, we're doing a, a live launch with uh, Android. Uh, and then based on that, we do iteration before we go to the iOS uh, store. And then um, that's uh, f success, which I mentioned about. And uh, stage one, as I mentioned about you and the game, stage two is more in depth. They get through stage two where we talk about their, um, their business structure and where the risks are. They go to a face-to-face -face interview. And uh, we have uh, mentors come in and ask them questions. And then uh, and they're in. And uh, the teams. Internally, they use a lot of different, uh, we don't force any particular tools on them. We just provide them with things they should use. And I'll go a quick, quick look here at uh, the, the game. So this is our first teams. We've got Donna Rippet, who are doing a game called Ninja Raft, which is a very cool tower defense game crossed with FTL. So you have a, a group of ninjas that you um, move around a, uh, a raft that you build. Uh, and once it's like a tower defense, you build a raft. It floats on the river, pirates attack. You then tap and move the ninjas around to attack uh, the pirates. It's very fun, very cool. Um, Screwtape Studios, uh, Megan and Anthony, uh, they're doing a, uh, a social word game called Verbi, which, is, uh, which has got some really interesting uh, twists. It's got like a um, crossword puzzle with a uh, cross with Ruzzle, I'd, I'd explain it that way. Um, work in progress art. And Ghostbox are developing, this is the team here, uh, they're developing a um, a, uh, a game called Dragon Season, which is basically a, an endless runner where you fly through the sky. That's it. Thank you. Good.